what are you doing here in New Zealand? Um, following you around. Yeah, I guess so. <laughs> yes, it's true, guys. Pearl is joining me here in New Zealand as we do uh, our final days of Hello Harto Southern Hemisphere. Ah. Ah. <laughs> We arrived in Auckland and the road was calling. I wanted to get a sense of the indigenous culture of New Zealand, so we headed south towards Rotorua. But I had one challenge ahead of me. About to drive on the wrong side of the road for the first time in my life. You have to stop and wonder, is this more dangerous than flying on a plane? Yeah, substantially, much, much riskier. But I feel way more confident with this, but also very, very nervous. Observation number two, I've walked to the wrong side of the car twice already. Initial observations number three, where's the emergency brake? Oh, it's here. This is gonna be weird no matter what. Guys, the turn signals are on opposite sides. This is where the window wipers are? Oh, I'll be like, I'm signaling! <laughs> Adjusting gears with the left, totally different. Every time. It stands for, oh god damn, that's steep. I think that I will just maintain this white knuckled grip until we get there. I started to get the hang of driving and safely got us to New Zealand's beautiful countryside. Well guys, we're about to go have an authentic Maori experience at the local Tamaki Maori Village Center. The Maori are considered the indigenous people of New Zealand. They settled here in the 13th century from the Polynesian Islands. Here we are at the Tamaki Maori village experience, uh, getting ready to experience the village. Seems so far so good. We walked around to the different sections of the village where they had various demonstrations of cultural items and games. It's quite the workout. So what they were saying earlier is that they did this in water and the goal was to make as small a splash as possible. Like each of your feet was a diver. I don't know how that could be possible. One of the more obvious traditions that the Maori have is facial tattooing. I asked one of the men about it. Can I ask you about your your face? Ooh. Yeah. Um, so I heard that the the males can get it all over all over their faces. Is there any specific like system of ranking or stuff you have to earn to? Yes. Yeah. It's, it's, it's an academic um, way of showing what you have done in your lifetime. Oh. So uh, below your eyelid, you have the physical realm, what you're good at, um, what you can touch, feel, and everything like that. That's what you put on the lower half. The upper half is dedicated to the knowledge that you have within your brain. Mm. So whatever you, it's like when you do the hongi, you would have seen the hongi out there, you're pressing of the noses, that's the uh, breath of life that you share. And when you go through your process, your nose is the first thing to get done. Mm. That gives you life. From that, you work your way on the physical realm. Then you go on to the spiritual realm, which is on your head. And all the knowledge that goes into your head. When you do the hongi with your head, you're actually passing knowledge mm. across. So you're passing breath and then you're passing knowledge and then that's how you um, showcase how well, how high ranking you are. If you don't really have anything on your head, you're not really not knowledgeable, mm. but you are very good at the physical realm, whether that be fighting or this day and age rugby and anything, mm -hmm. type of things like that. Great, thanks so much. You're welcome, you're welcome. Thank you. We then entered the Maori meeting house, where they performed some of their traditional song and dance. They ended with the powerful haka, which is a ceremonial dance used for war or other special events. Haka! Very intimidating. It's very intimidating. I can see why the All Blacks always do it. That's New Zealand's rugby team. Wow. That's scary. As we left the Maori meeting house, I remembered wondering about the symbolic nature of the fern in New Zealand. So I asked this gentleman about it. 
silver fern, we, we have pickle pickle, we have food that grows out of there. When Māori first came to New Zealand, that was the first, that was the main food source, is bush pepper. Mm -hmm. The bush pepper, and this, this was the main food source for, for a little while. Talking about New Zealand, or you know, all Kiwis, um, it, it holds a huge significance to Māori. Um, one side is green, which mm -hmm. represents nature or the natives if you will the other side being silver or, or white if you, if you will representing the the europeans so that the actual leaf represents you know both sides coming Come together. together and then you'll notice on everything of, with the silver fern on it the background's the black mm -hmm. you know so that's the, the different the two-toned colors or people coming together. Great, Breton, thank you so much. You're my welcome. Absolutely, thank you so much. It's, it's all right. And you take all this in, and what's to be gained from it? But there's absolutely something to be gained in what can be remembered and what can be written for the future. There's always a lesson in terms of how to treat each other, how to appreciate where you've come from, and how to be proud of yourself, even when others might not see it. Really, just a lot of respect. Um, yeah. Next time our travels take us to yet another world within New Zealand. The land of Middle Earth. <laughs>